Hi, folks. We're just going to give it a couple minutes to let uh, everybody get in, and then we'll get started. Hey folks, uh, I'm gonna get started and we'll let folks join in uh, as they come in. Um, so first off, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, as always, I hope you're all keeping healthy and safe uh, during these times. And I wanted to thank you all for the work that you're doing in your communities to ensure that we come out of this pandemic stronger than ever. Uh, before we begin, I want to recognize that the land I work from is the unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe, and I feel privileged to serve community in the way that I get to here. Uh, the Indigenous Caucus is very happy to welcome the Community Housing Transformation Centre, who join us to share different Indigenous-led initiatives funded by the centre, as well as tips for possible initiatives, as well as a Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. Today, joining us, we have Jen Lemba, uh, Aude Morel, and Chrissy Diavatopoulos. Uh, a couple of housekeeping items before I pass this over to them. We are recording today's webinar in order for folks who could not uh, attend today to be able to uh, share and learn from this information. Please enter your questions in the designated question area and ask, and we'll ask them in the order that they come in at the end of the webinar. Uh, you're also all muted and we would request that you stay muted throughout the presentation. Uh, Jen, with no further ado, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Stephen. Um, do you have this? Okay, perfect. So I'll let you pull up the PowerPoint. Okay, so you can go to the next slide, please. Thank you. All right, so I would like to start by uh, acknowledging that the Community Housing Transformation Center is located on unceded Indigenous lands in Chojage, Montreal, the traditional territory of the Kanyangahaga a place which has long served as a site of meeting and exchange among many First Nations. We recognize and respect that the Kanyankahaga as the traditional custodians of the lands and waters on which we meet today. Stephen, you can move on to the next slide, please. Thank you so much. Great, so the Community Housing Transformation Center was founded in 2018. We are a pan-Canadian nonprofit organization uh, that is sector-led and we are backed by the CMHC through Canada's National Housing Strategy. Uh, we believe everyone deserves a safe, affordable place to call home. And we're working towards a more entrepreneurial and economically viable model of community housing, one that will serve the needs of our communities now and in the future. Next slide, please. So as you can see from our logo, one of our logos, um, a home for everyone is what we aspire for. Um, our vision is to support a resilient, growing, sustainable, and inclusive community housing sector. Our mission is to connect and partner with sector service and community housing providers to facilitate sector-wide transformation. Um, we also fund, support, and build organizational capacity where gaps and needs exist within organizations. Next slide. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, so the center supports the community housing sector and drives transformation through three main 
all through these main activities. So we have a resource center. Um, we have our funds. We have the self-assessment tool. And we want to be seen as a conveyor of the sector. Next slide, please. OK, so we have five priorities, uh, the first being reconciliation with indigenous peoples. Uh, then we have enhancing environmental sustainability and reducing sector footprint, resilience and innovative practices, social inclusion and community engagement, and finally, sector growth. Next slide, please. So specifically with reconciliation with indigenous people, uh, the center is committed to promote the crucial importance of reconciliation within and outside the center. We focus on and respond to calls to action related to indigenous peoples, and we create tools and training to support community housing providers in reconciliation efforts, as well as engage and support indigenous, indigenous led and or managed housing providers and support their transformation agendas. Next slide, please. So we have um, different streams of grants that I will let Chrissy present to you. But before that, I would just like to say that um, our grants are always ongoing, so there's no deadline. However, we do encourage you to apply um, as soon as possible if you do have an idea, just because our financial year ends in March. So um, we offer grants to community housing providers, community housing service providers, community organizations under the form of three separate programs. Um, Chrissy, I will let you take over from here. Sure, thank you, Jen. Uh, hi, everybody, it's a pleasure to be with you. So we'll go to the next slide. So I'll start with the Community-Based Tenant Initiative Fund or the CBTI Fund for short. So um, to give a bit of context, as Jeanne mentioned, our mandate and mission as a center is to promote community housing and to promote the resilience and the strength of the sector and of community housing providers. And so in order to do that, we have to involve and include tenants. It's gonna strengthen the sector and it's gonna strengthen organizations themselves. So the goal of the CBTI fund is to support tenant engagement and tenant inclusion um, initiatives. So in order to engage with tenants, um, we need to increase their participation in tenant, of tenants in housing decisions. We need to increase their tenancy skills and access to information and to create the very opportunities and spaces and structures that encourage and enable tenant participation. So whether your projects aim to encourage tenant leadership within your organizations or consultations with tenants with the aim of informing future housing decisions or providing them with training and capacity building opportunities or creating materials around tenancy, uh, increasing participation and in advocacy campaigns. So whatever the initiative is, it's important that tenants are involved in a significant way. So what we want and what we hope is to contribute to the process of turning tenants from a customer receiver position to one of becoming active participants within the housing sector. So whether tenants live in community housing already or whether they live in for-profit housing, we want them to be actively involved in decisions that impact them in defining housing services and being able to advocate for more affordable housing in their communities. So next slide, please. So the CBTI fund has three main objectives and all projects have to align with at least one of these objectives. So the first is to increase, promote access to information. This could be information for tenants and or by tenants. The second is to build capacity around housing decisions and responsibilities. And so, of course, if we want to involve tenants and partner with tenants, we need to also provide uh, capacity building opportunities. And the third is to increase participation of tenants in housing decisions and projects. Next slide. So here are some examples of projects um, that we have funded through the CBTI fund or that we can fund. So taking concrete steps to increase representation of members from underrepresented groups on the board of directors and or committees within um, housing organizations, creating tenant leader groups to improve tenant participation, offering training to tenants, conducting tenant-led participatory research projects to better understand housing trends, proposing solutions, 
promoting community housing through tenant-led initiatives, integrating Indigenous knowledge within tenancy initiatives, organizing consultations for and by tenants to make sure that they inform and contribute to projects that affect them, including a tenant voice in future build and services in order to ensure that tenant needs and wants are represented and improving financial literacy management capacity um, for tenants. So one thing I want to mention as well is that if you have an idea for a project, we do encourage you to contact uh, our program managers and have a discussion. We're here to help you and guide you in the process. And if you have a CBTI fund question specifically, I encourage you to call me. Uh, my contact information is here on the slide. My extension is 104. And so all program managers um, are available to answer questions and to guide you in the process. Next slide. Okay, so now things that we do not fund. So we don't fund recreational, social, supportive, or health-related activities. So in, just to specify what I mean by this, of course, we can fund the process of engaging tenants in, the pro, in that process. So if you want to do a consultation so tenants can inform services or future build, for example, that we can do. So the involvement of the tenants, but we don't fund the actual supportive or social recreational activities themselves. Um, we don't fund individual assistance in accessing housing. Activities that do not support um, our priority areas as a center or the fund's objectives. Expenses for activities carried out prior to the center's written approval for funding. Activities that are not new or transformative to the organization provider or sector. So it's important to mention that uh, transformative potential and capacity is um, an evaluation criteria for our funds. And we define transformation as change that is sustainable, long-term, concrete, and far-reaching. So what we essentially mean is that there are structures and processes that are going to be put in place throughout the, your project that will lead to sustained and significant change. So groups need to identify the issue or the challenge they want to address and then propose a method that will lead to impactful change. So this is what we mean by transformation. We don't fund core programs, regular services, administrative and operating expenses, and we do not fund projects that are mainly aimed at developing or implementing a communications plan or marketing strategy. Next slide. So now I'm going to talk to you about a few projects that we have funded under CBTI. Um, I'm going to start with two Indigenous-led projects. The first is in Prince Edward Island, the Native Council of PEI. So the Indigenous Tenant Support Initiative will inform and support off-reserve Indigenous tenants on their rights and responsibilities in order to reduce the number of evictions that community members face when renting in PEI. Many community members are being rent evicted from their apartments and others are simply having a very difficult time finding housing due to the lack of affordable housing in the province. And so Indigenous off-reserve tenants will increase their capacity to take charge of their housing. They're also going to, um, the project is also going to, um, I'm sorry, there's also going to be opportunities for community dialogue within the project and community members will be offered the chance to engage with the project prior to implementation in order to ensure that activities are tailored towards tenant and community needs. So essentially, this is a project about tenant education and tenant rights by also having a dialogue uh, with community members. The second project is from a Métis Family and Community Services Agency in Kamloops, BC, Lee Michif Otipemisewa Community and Family Services, and the, projects, it, the project is Elders and Residents Program at the Kelkiak, a place of belonging. So it's important to mention that we are one of several funders for this project, and the project aims to, improve, to provide support to First Nation, Métis, and Inuit youth transitioning from the child welfare system to more independent living. The 
youth will be living in a culturally safe, supported and affordable housing complex and will receive guidance, mentorship and teachings from elders who will also be living in the residence. The youth tenants will learn new skills and knowledge alongside traditional and cultural teachings that will increase their capacity and readiness to become involved in their housing and eventually successfully transition to future housing. So elders will work in partnership with other staff to support strategies and engage tenants in collaborative activities that will support youth in building tenancy skills, including uh, the establishment of a youth driven tenant care committee council that, we, that will meet regularly. So it's important to note that we're funding the housing and tenancy uh, skill development portion of the project. And we deemed that the project has high potential for knowledge sharing. The organization will document and share lessons learned that can benefit the sector and inspire other, other housing providers who wish to implement similar projects. And now for the next slide. I'm gonna now present a project uh, that is not indigenous led, but that has, um, that works with indigenous clients. So it's in Vancouver's downtown Eastside Collaborative Society and it's the SRO hub project. So in Vancouver's downtown Eastside, there's approximately 4,000 residents, a third of which are indigenous that live in approximately 100 privately owned single room occupancy SRO hotels, uh, hotels. So the housing stock plays an integral role in the continuum of housing choices for vulnerable and low income residents, often acting as a last rental home option before homelessness. So the project aims to improve living conditions, promote building rehabilitation and stabilize rents in seven pilot privately owned SRO hotels. This will be achieved by empowering SRO tenants to shape the future of their housing conditions through tenant committees, tenant rights education, knowledge sharing, peer led tenant support services and collective participation in developing housing agreements. So the project is innovative as it will bring tenants and landlords together with policymakers in a collaborative way to develop these housing agreements that incorporate both forgivable loans for rehabilitation and cutting edge peer led supports. So ultimately the aim is to improve living conditions and stabilize rents in these privately owned SROs by including a tenant voice and tenant participation in the process. And of course, the ultimate goal is to secure the privately owned SRO stock in the long term. And as you may have heard recently, the city of Vancouver has announced a plan to purchase the 100 privately owned SROs over the next 10 years. So the organization has worked really hard and the outcomes of the project have been very impactful so far. And the last project that I wanna mention is uh, the Gene Twee Treatment Center. Um, it's a community substance use and mental health agency who provides housing for women and women and their children. And the Gene Tweet Center and a partner agency are partnering to conduct a grassroots research and tenant engagement project in partnership with the women in order to redefine the housing model and programming, both the program design and the built form to meet tenant needs and align with best practices. So the project will conduct a needs assessment and program review of the housing models to identify and recommend best practices in housing marginalized women. Tenants will be involved in co-designing this project through an advisory committee. Um, so the researchers will also interview and create focus groups with the women and the model will be shared to the housing sector more broadly. So as you can see, whether your project involves consultation with tenants, the creation of tenant committees, creating a new tenancy model that involves indigenous teachings, designing tenant education and tenant rights materials and conducting community consultations. There's a lot of different ideas of projects that you can participate in and where tenants can play a central role um, and be actively involved in these projects. So I'm gonna end here for the CBTI presentation and I'll, I'll pass it on to my colleague, Aude Morel, who's going to talk about the Sector Transformation Fund. Thank you. Thank you, Chrissy. Uh, hello, everyone. So I'm going to talk about the Sector Transformation Fund. Uh, it's a fund that has two streams, but uh, a lot of the things I'm going to say work for both streams. So um, 
The Sector Transformation Fund provides access to financial resources for the community housing sector so it can undertake transformative changes to improve sectoral resilience and develop innovative housing solutions. STF is meant to support initiatives by nonprofit community led housing provider and sectoral service providers. Um, so the STF has two streams, the local project and the sectoral impact project. Both are dedicated to help housing providers or service providers to increase their capacities and efficiency in order to provide more better housing or services within their housing. The objective is to develop and spread successful models and or practices to reinforce the community housing sector resilience and ensure it will achieve growth. So basically what we want to do is increase capacity, increase resilience, innovate and develop. This is what this fund is for. Uh, next slide, please. So um, the STF has nine objectives and your project has to align with at least one of them. One is definitely enough to have a project that is eligible. So we are working with uh, leverage existing funding, lead the sector to reduce its environmental footprint, encourage housing initiatives for indigenous people, develop tools and make them more accessible, support sectoral consolidation and other partnerships, reinforce organizational capacity, enhance sector resilience, identify identify and fill sectoral gaps in housing services and engage community. Next slide, please. So the first stream of the sector transformation fund is the local project. So on this stream, you can ask up to $150,000 the local project stream focuses on project with a smaller scope. So it's within a municipality and neighborhood, or it has one or two organizations working together. Um, so far, what we have funded with the local project is um, strategic planning, portfolio assessments. So what do you keep? What do you redevelop? What do you sell to make sure that you are uh, viable on the long term? business cases and feasibility studies uh, for new projects, training, growth strategies for the organization, new software to optimize management and new tools, amalgamation, new partnerships, shared services. Um, so I just want to mention that on the new software, so it has to support the growth of the organization. Otherwise, it's a core activity which we do not fund. But as long as it's for the growth of the organization, we will look at it. And next slide, please. So I try to provide some example of what we have uh, funded so far. Uh, so those are the uh, indigenous led project that we have funded. Um, so I'm not going to review all of them, but I'd like to speak about um, the Squamish Housing Society, which is uh, in BC. And um, the Squamish Nation has created its own housing provider, and they have managed to leverage a significant amount of money to do capital project, uh, but they needed funding to provide training and uh, strategic planning to the board. So this is what we have uh, funded. And also uh, the Nat Native Intertribal Housing Cooperative in uh, Ontario, uh, was looking for funding to assess their existing model and find how to operate on a more sustainable basis. Mm. And the, the rest of the project you see here mainly is strategic planning and, uh, and retreats that we have funded to different groups. Uh, next slide, please. I also have some projects I'd like to talk about uh, that are not Indigenous led, but uh, they benefit the Indigenous community. So the Victoria Kool-Aid uh, Society in BC uh, has a project to indigenize uh, the organization. Uh, Horizon Housing in Alberta is looking into what are the reasons why their Indigenous tenants have a higher exit rate and what they can do about it. And the Circle Community Land Trust, it's in Ontario, and uh, they are looking into acquiring some scattered properties. The city of Toronto is laying off, and a third of those units are going to Indigenous tenants. 
I also have some projects that are not indigenous led or does not benefit the indigenous uh, tenant, but could as, as well be. So um, in Orleans, in Ontario, we have a consultant that is working with uh, five very small housing providers uh, into developing a collaborative model to be able to develop bigger projects. Um, also in Ontario, the uh, Hamilton East Kiwanis nonprofit home um, is working with another group and they are looking into developing a third party venture to develop a project that none of them could actually take alone. So um, they are kind of gathering their capacity. Uh, also in BC, uh, we are supporting a group that is in the process of doubling, doubling their units and they need a new property management software to make sure they have the capacity to handle uh, the extra units. And um, also in New Brunswick, we have funded a group who needs to build their governance framework. Uh, next slide, please. So those, those really are the type of things we have funded so far for STF and that are eligible. Um, so the second, trim, the second stream of STF is the sectoral impact fund. And on this one, we are going uh, with a larger scope. And so there is no limit to the amount uh, you can request. So the, sector, the sectoral impact stream aims to support projects with a wider scope, provincial or national, larger partnerships and answers to gaps in services. This fund helps us support projects such as creation of land trust, support the establishment of new sectoral organization where gaps exist, exploration of new models, pilot project and initiative that builds sectoral capacity and everything related to consolidation, cooperation, collaboration, mutualization, merger, partnerships, everything that builds capacity, um, fills the gaps where they exist um, and help create uh, innovative solutions. Um, so, so far, we don't have any uh, indigenous-led sectoral impact project that were awarded. Uh, we have, uh, I think it's two that we are processing right now, so I cannot really uh, talk about them, but uh, we are really happy they were submitted and we are really looking into them. Um, what we do not fund, so you see there's quite a big list here, um, but some are very common, like uh, we want further expenses engaged before the grant was awarded, obviously. Uh, but the most important you would have to consider is uh, we do not fund construction or renovation. Uh, and this includes, uh, for example, any architect or in engineer's fees. Um, we do not fund recreational, social, supportive or health activities. Uh, no core programs, uh, no, fundra no fundraising activities, no capital investment project, no research project and uh, no communication and marketing plan. Uh, so yeah, those are the, the, main, the main restriction we have. Um, and um, that is all for me for the uh, Sector Transformation Fund. Um, so I found this fund, is this fund is pretty amazing because it allows us to do a lot of things. There's such a variety of projects we are able to fund, but uh, sometimes it's, quite complicated to navigate. So please, if you have an idea, contact us, talk to us, and, uh, and we'll see uh, if your project is eligible um, or not. Then I will uh, let Jean take the rest of the presentation. Next slide. Please. Awesome, great. So um, although yeah, so those, are, those were our grants. What we also can offer support in is the um, RHI initiative. So the Rapid Housing Initiative Fund from CMHC. So right now we are offering grants of up to $50,000 to support the business case development for projects that meet uh, the center criteria. So I guess to specify a little bit further on that is no, we don't do brick and mortar. But however, if you want to, let's say, access the funds to do brick and mortar through the RHI, we can help you um, build capacity within your organization 
and uh, take you to that level. Uh, we also have a new collaboration with uh, the FCM on the Sustainable Affordable Housing Fund. So we are acting as RECs or Regional Energy Coaches. And um, this is a new fund that has been launched and it's to improve energy efficiency and affordability of existing and new affordable housing units. So uh, funding is available for numerous project stages that do include brick and mortar and retrofit, et cetera. So we would not be giving money for brick and mortar again, but we would be assisting you in building case to access the money for construction or retrofits that are environmentally friendly. And um, yeah, if you could um, go to the next slide. So those are our, our program managers. So there's Amy Bold, program manager. She's actually um, in charge of uh, the FCM. So if ever that's something that interests you. There's Aude Morel, which you've already met. There's Chris, uh, there's Chrissy that you've also met. There's Hope that's in charge of um, St. John's and um, RHI. RHI, there you go, <laughs> RHI. Uh, there's Luc and there's Renee. And uh, if you go to the next slide, Steven, this is the contact information to, um, to contact each and every one of them with uh, the information of what they can assist you with. Um, and if you go to the next slide, so this is the question portion of the event. And also please like our pages on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn and um, tag us in all relevant content. And I would just like to say before we enter into the question portion of the event is if you have an idea, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to contact the managers, the program managers. They're very, very friendly and they're amazing. So yeah, that's about it. Um, I guess we can tackle the questions. Steven, I'll give you back the, there we go, okay. All right, perfect. Thank you so much for for coming out and, and sharing that information. I, I've i known about the programs, even I learned a lot from what you all shared. So, so thank you so much. Um, we don't, let's see, in the chat here. So folks were asking if, uh, yeah, I guess Jen, you got back to them. We, does anybody have any questions? We don't have any questions in the, in the Q and A um, portion yet. I think people are still wondering if we're going to if they're going to have access to the slides. So I would just want to say this is recorded. So um, this will be shared on the CH, CHRA's website and our website as well. So that's why you should follow us on the social media channel so you know when it's available. Uh, so our first question has come in. Um, so what are the deadlines for FCM funding? Oh, I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I'm not so sure because it's Amy who is taking care of this, but I'm not really sure there are some deadlines because the program was just uh, set up a few months ago. So, um, but uh, we'll we'll keep uh, we'll keep on going. I'm gonna ask Amy. If she's available. I'll see if she can answer very quickly. Perfect. And then Karen Yast, we we will share a recording uh, of it as well. Uh, another question here was um, wondering where the center gets its funding for all of the programs that it offers. It's from the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, CMHC. We were created as a result of the National Housing Strategy. Okay, so I have someone asking a question uh, in regards uh, to a, someone who would be a local program manager um, in North Vancouver. Who uh, who should this person speak to? Um, I would say, well, first, uh, one of the program managers, Luc Labelle, is responsible for British Columbia, so you could contact him. And it also depends on which fund you're interested in. So if it's the sector transformation fund, you can contact Luc. If it's the community-based tenant initiative fund, you're welcome to contact me. Um, so on the last page of our PowerPoint, there's contact information of all the program managers and the provinces and territories and subjects that they're responsible for. But at the same time, don't worry so much because even if you contact 
a program manager, we can help you anyway and, and point you in the right direction. I would like just to add on uh, that question. I think they're also contemplating uh, to turning a vacant lot into a family shelter. So that could be rapid housing initiative, if I'm not mistaken. So maybe that uh, maybe I would start off by contacting Hope, Hope Jamieson. What do you guys think? Makes sense? Yeah. Uh, yes, but really don't worry too much, like dial any number and, uh, and we'll get you through to the, to the right per person. Um, so I got an answer from Amy and there's no deadline on the FCM, uh, the FCM funding. Um, we had a question come in through the chat. Um, can Indigenous development corporations apply on any of, the, any of these funds uh, as an economic arm of Indigenous governments? Chrissy, you want to take this one? Sure. So we fund a nonprofit community housing providers and or the larger associations and federations um, and so that are nonprofit. And so if it's an indigenous government and so then the funding can go to a nonprofit um, entity that is associated to the government or to the community, but it would have to be a nonprofit. And if you have more questions about that, I do suggest contacting us and we can exchange and um, see how that could work. Perfect. Um, I can't think of this answer off the top of my head. Do any of you know what the RHI deadline, the application deadlines are? December 31st. Thank you. And I uh, just want to say that uh, the funding we are providing uh, to support with the RHI uh, project, we are uh, fast tracking the application so you can get an answer from us within less than a week. So there's still time uh, if you need some legwork being done or some consultant, some business case, whatever, we will look into it into it and we will be a little bit more flexible with the guidelines of the fund when it is uh, RHI related. That's okay. So a follow up to that is, have there been any RHI projects approved already? Um, just to be clear, we are not uh, approving RHI project. We are mm -hmm. approving project that will support like things that will support your application to RHI. But yes, we, we've had like five, six so far. I am not so sure it's hope dealing with that, but yes, definitely uh, there have been. And if I could just add something, I forgot to mention it in the presentation for CBTI specifically for that fund, the maximum amount of funding per project is $150,000. And so the projects for tenant engagement um, initiatives could be from a few thousand dollars to 150 per project, 150,000. I think there's some more questions about RHI in the chat. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop the link to our website that has um, a little bit of the information and that uh, brings you to the application portal. Maybe that could be of interest. And if you have RHI specific questions, I do encourage you to, co to contact Hope um, Jameson, one of the program managers, she could assist you and guide you in the process. So we do have another question in the in the Q and A, um, and this would be: Would you fund national networks focused on women and housing? So it sounds like sectoral impact, but at the yeah, definitely, yeah. If it's a nonprofit uh, organization, um, then definitely yes. And one thing to mention that's important: uh, again, we weren't so clear about that in the presentation, but it for CBTI for the Community Based Tenant Initiative Fund, eligibility is a bit more flexible, and so. For the STF, the Sector Transformation Fund, it has to be either a sector service provider or a community housing provider. But for the, for the community-based tenant initiative fund, because we're working with tenants, we're more flexible. So it could be a social housing provider, it could be a tenant association, um, a nonprofit organization that works with tenants. And so we're more flexible on eligibility as long as it's nonprofit. 
Um, another question here is, will it be possible to apply to CBTI next year and are these ongoing grants? Yes, so for CBTI, um, we have uh, funding that is, um, so, so the deadline basically is like early 2024 of when the, 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 the funding is ending, at least for now, that's the deadline. And so projects are ongoing until then, like the funding is ongoing. Um, but for groups who would like funding, you know, sooner rather than later, I do encourage you to think of ideas and submit as soon as possible. We do have money left for this program year that's ending in March. And so this is a great time right now to apply for, for the Community-Based 10 Initiative Fund. Okay. All right, just waiting. Does anybody have any other questions for everyone? I guess I'll, I'll, I'll pose a question to the three of you. Of all of the projects that you've you've looked at, what are there any projects that have released at OT that you didn't speak about in the presentation today? Like one that you've seen go through that just really interested you? Uh, I guess you want to go? Sure, I'll go. I mean, honestly, for the community-based initiative fund, we've had really interesting projects. And it's, um, you know, we encourage groups to be creative, um, come up with your own ideas and strategies. Uh, you don't have to necessarily do what's already been funded. Like we really encourage kind of innovation and, and new ways of engaging with tenants. Um, you know, for, for the CBTI, we've had really great advocacy type of projects that defend tenant rights and um, are trying to change bylaws and to really make a, a systemic uh, change. So we've had great, you know, projects around advocacy. Um, we've had projects around um, forming a coalition in a region of Quebec. Um, and in that region, they're bringing tenants together that live in co-ops, nonprofit housing providers, and social housing uh, providers. And kind of, you know, um, it's going to be like a, a network of supporting tenant leaders. So that's very interesting. Um, we've had initiatives around governance. So making sure that underrepresented groups are represented on the board and in governance of non-housing, uh, non-profit housing. We've had participatory research projects. Um, there's a project from the Community Land Trust in Parkdale in Toronto, where they're doing a uh, participatory research study on the high rise rentals in the neighborhood to better understand what's happening in terms of uh, evictions and other issues that tenants are, are facing, and then engaging with tenants on proposing solutions. And so there's a lot of potential of, um, of very interesting projects. Okay, on the STF funds, I really like seeing the project where uh, we are exploring new models. Uh, for example, we've had one about uh, student housing. We had uh, one for middle class elders also because um, there's like no middle wage kind of ways of having like um, there would not be any Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to say it in English. Um, so there would not be uh, anything that is um, not too expensive, but also eligible for the elders to stay in their community, get the service they need um, with when you when you're middle class. So we have a project that is looking into that and developing something. Um, what else do we have? We have guides, for example, for. Our, co-ops members. Uh, we have a project that is a digital platform for co-op members so that they're able to speak within one another in different co-ops and um, engage and, um, and, and deal, like help each other deal with the problems they have. Um, what do we have? So a lot of strategic planning because a lot of organizations are starting by, with the strategic planning. And then once they do that, we can see what comes out of the strategic plan and see if there are some initiatives that we are able to fund. 
um, on this. Um, the, the Squamish project I talked about is, uh, is a very, very good project and I was very enthusiastic about that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And if I could just add one more for CBTI that I found really interesting was the um, National Affordable Housing Corporation um, are putting together a guide for tenants with intellectual disabilities. And so the goal is to involve tenants in the process, of course, and also um, in a way demystify the uh, like for um, for landlords to be able to be more open to renting to individuals that have intellectual disabilities. And so providing that, uh, that support and that guidance, and hopefully in the future, having more units that are devoted to this population specifically. Um, so I'm not a program manager, but I am a communication manager. So I get to read more in depth about all these projects. and. We've already mentioned it, but I guess I just wanted to touch up on it just because it's one of my favorite ones so far that we've covered. And I thought it was really interesting. It's um, the ones in Elders in Residence and Kikikiels. And I think a lot of people at the center was, were also very excited about it. And um, I just feel like it addresses um, indigenous, the concept of indigenous homelessness. And um, there's a lot of potential in it being kind of like a blueprint to be reproduced uh, across Canada. So that's one of the projects that I feel very excited about. This is not right. All right. So I'm not seeing any more questions here, but I'll I'll leave it uh, leave it open. I just wanted to thank the three of you for for joining today. Um, and hopefully this is the first of many uh, chances to have you come on and, and join us um, with some hopefully new projects from a whole bunch of people that were able to attend today. Hopefully you see a bunch of new things come across your tables uh, in the near future. Um, if that is all, like I said, so we'll post this to uh, the CHRA page uh, and you'll be able to find this on Twitter uh, as well. And then we will also share the link uh, in our in our newsletters, uh, both the CHRA main, main newsletter as well as the Indigenous Caucus newsletter. Um, that's all for me, Chrissy, Jen, Oat, if you have any final thoughts that you'd like to share before we go. Thank you so much, Stephen, for organizing this <laughs> and for having us. Yeah, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. And we encourage you to contact us to have a conversation about ideas and um, we'd be happy to, to guide you in the process. Well, thank you so much. I think like Jeanne and Chrissy have said the rest of it. So thank you for having us. Great. And thank you all for attending today. Um, that's all. And uh, have a great day and rest of the week. Thank you.